Shalom, beloved, a word. Yesterday, while I was reading the book of Second Baruch, I went into a vision, and though it seemed short, it was full of a message from the Most High. In the first vision, I was in a banquet hall. It was beautiful, elegant, stately. The people were well-dressed. It seemed very refined. And there was a woman standing at the head of a table and she was speaking. And when I listened to her, her words were moving. And when she finished, there was someone near the doorway calling out that the Lord was there, that he was coming. But nobody at the table stood up to meet him. Nobody ran to the door. Nobody got up. And as I watched, I was stunned. Why aren't you getting up? It's the Lord. My God. But everybody sat there expecting him to enter to them. And then I went into another vision and I knew the people in that vision, they were economically challenged. They did not have as much money. They didn't live in the same quality as the first group who I saw in this grand banquet hall. But as soon as word came, they were preparing suppers they were preparing, but the one woman, the first one that I saw, as soon as word came that the Lord was coming, she started rejoicing and threw her hands up. Then the image took me to a room where there was a mother with a child. She was in the kitchen cooking and busy trying to prepare a dinner. And the moment she heard that the Lord was coming, she stopped everything she was doing and took the ch child, called to the other children, and ran for the door. In both cases of the second vision, they were rejoicing. They were so happy that it was palpable. I got caught up in the electric excitement, the, the awesome, stunning shock of the expectation. And then I went back into my regular view. I was back in the chair and I had been sitting as I said, reading second Baruch. And I was sitting there shocked about the people in the first vision. They had such eloquent words. The speeches were wonderful. But when they heard the Lord was coming, it was as though nobody had prepared their hearts. They were so busy being intellectual, being refined, that nobody had prepared their hearts. They were too refined to get up and go to the door. And it grieved me. It shocked me. It was stunning. But in the second vision, the first woman upon me, hearing it, threw her arms up in the air and just went crazy with rejoicing. You could feel it emanating off of her. Then it went to the second portion where the woman was in the kitchen with her child cooking. And she was preparing something, but as soon as the news reached her, she dropped everything. 
She went into rejoicing, but she was running for the door because news that the Lord was coming had reached them. Beloved, the message. I was in second Baruch. And when I came out of it, I realized many people's heart are not prepared for the Lord. They are so busy celebrating like the first group was and gathering together, their hearts aren't humbled and waiting. I'm in 2 Baruch chapter 44 at the eighth verse. This is what I came out of the vision and read. And I believe it all tied in. Because whatsoever is now is nothing. But that which shall be is very great. For everything that is corruptible shall pass away. And everything that dies shall depart. And all the present time shall be forgotten, nor shall there be any rem remembrance of the present time, which is defiled with evils. For that which runs now runs unto vanity, and that which prospers shall quickly fall and be humiliated. For that which is to be shall be the object of desire, and that which comes afterwards shall we hope. And for that which comes afterwards shall we hope. For it is a time that passes not away. This is what I came out of the vision and my eyes were fastened to. I'm going to say it again. I want to get this out. I was trying a lot of things, but I'm just going to get it out. Because whatsoever, whatsoever is now is nothing. In the first vision, the people in this grand banquet hall, well-dressed, very intellectual, very successful. I believe it's the first church. That church that dresses itself, but it is an outward covering of what they believe worship, praise, they are under a tradition, under the thoughts of the carnal mind. But they don't prepare their hearts because whatsoever is now, it is nothing. But that which shall be is very great. That Lord, the Lord coming by, they missed the greatness. They missed the blessing because they were so caught up in the now. Although they thought they were ready for everything that is corruptible shall pass away and everything that dies shall depart and all the present time shall be forgotten in all its grandeur and all its glory and all its pomp. They had no idea who was at the door. Because eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Lord, mm, mm, mm. Nor shall there be any remembrance of the present time, which is defiled with evils. Even for all the beauty, you could see the evil in it at the end because they did not get up. They sat there waiting for the Lord to enter instead of going to him, instead of pursuing him. For that which runs now runs unto vanity, and that which prospers shall quickly fall and be humiliated. For that which is to be shall be the object of desire. And the second vision, they dropped everything Nothing mattered when they heard that the Lord was coming. They entered into his courts with thanksgiving. They were rejoicing. And for that which comes afterwards shall we hope. For it is a time that passes not away. I am reading 2 Baruch 
chapter 44, verse 8. Verse 8 to verse 11. I'm going to read 12. And the hour come which abides forever, and the new world comes which does not turn to corruption those who depart to its blessedness, and has no mercy on those who depart to torment, and leaves not to perdition those who live in it. I knew those people who thought so much of themselves that they did not get up. Their hearts were not prepared for the Lord. Seek his face while he may be found. He stands at the door of our heart and knocks. If we open up to him, he shall come in and sup with us. May we never grow so great in our minds in this world of corruption. May we never think so much of ourselves by what we see in the mirror or any education we have, any standing we have, that we don't honor the presence of the Most High. They thought they were honoring him in that first vision. The ballroom was prepared. It was grand and elegant. But even the woman speaking, honoring the Most High, her words were beautiful. But when the word came out that he was there, nobody moved. It was shocking and it was so hurtful, so sad to see. But in that second vision, as soon as word came that the Lord was near and on his way, the first woman went into rejoicing that it was impassioned. It was so powerful. I got moved in the presence of her. I was caught up. It was rapturous. The joy in her, the thanksgiving, the praising that she had for the Lord coming. And the second woman who was preparing with her child, as soon as word hit her, she dropped everything and ran, grabbing her children to go and meet the Lord. He stands at the door and knocks. If any man hears his voice and lets him in, he shall come in and sup with him. We shall make his abode with him. Beloved, let nothing in this world distract you so much that even when you think you are doing right, when they tell you the Lord is nigh, he is at the door, that you sit waiting, thinking he will come in unto you when you haven't gone to the door to greet the Lord. May he come into your heart with joy and thanksgiving May everything we see turn to nothing in comparison to his presence and him calling, because many are called, but the chosen are few. It is a word, beloved, and I hope that the message of the vision that the Lord gave me, you receive according as he gave it to me. It's a word, beloved. Shalom.